I am Bernard Herschel. Before my retirement, I was the chief of HIV AIDS at the Geneva University Hospitals. You may call me an AIDS dinosaur who has followed the HIV epidemic from the very first cases in the early 1980s through the triumph of antiretroviral therapies, a triumph unequaled in the annals of medicine. This triumph has its flip side. Younger colleagues are no longer familiar with the opportunistic diseases and the myriad manifestations, hence the idea of these videos. After a short introduction, they will show a series of images illustrating one or several exemplary cases from my files. Benjamin Castleman, 1906 to 1982, was a professor of pathology at the Massachusetts General Hospital. The hallmark of the disease which bears his name is a particular histology, angiofollicular lymphoid hyperplasia. Angiofollicular hyperplasia. Note the penetrating blood vessels with a lollipop appearance and the lymphocytes, which are concentrically arranged like onion peels. It might be better to talk about Castleman's diseases than Castleman's disease, because the localized Castleman disease is very different from the multicentric Castleman disease, MCD. Localized disease occurs in children or young adults the preferred location is the mediastinum, it is asymptomatic, and it is treated with surgery, usually for diagnostic purposes, or not treated at all. In contrast, multicentric disease occurs in adults. It is a generalized lymphadenopathy with splenomegaly with considerable constitutional symptoms. There is visceral involvement and it needs to be treated with chemotherapy. Here are a few essential facts about HIV-associated multicentric Castleman's disease. Almost always there is lymphadenopathy and fever, often spinomegaly, hepatomegaly, respiratory symptoms. About a third of patients have edema and effusions. The skin and the CNS may be involved and 7% have a pericardial effusion. A majority of patients have associated Kaposi's sarcoma, which can occur before MCD. The reason is that both MCD and Kaposi's sarcoma are associated with infection by human herpes virus 8 or Kaposi's sarcoma herpes virus. A particular feature of multicentric Castleman's disease, completely unexplained, are spontaneous remissions. Associated with MCD are lymphoma, including multiple myeloma and Hodgkin's disease. As already mentioned, Kaposi's sarcoma, of course, HIV infection, hemophagocytosis, and the Crow-Fukase syndrome or POEMS, polyneuropathy, organomegaly, endocrine disease, monoclonality, and skin changes. Multicentric CD, with its polyclonal proliferation of lymphocytes, is not considered malignant. However, the incidence of lymphoma is high. In a group of 70 patients with CD, after a median follow-up of two years, 24 developed lymphoma although most of them were on effective heart. The insert shows a Kaplan-Meier curve with an incidence of approximately 50% of lymphoma after a follow-up of seven years. Human herpes virus 8, HHV8, is also called Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus or KSHV. It has strong homology with Epstein-Barr virus and herpes virus simia, but is only distantly related to herpes simplex virus or varicella zoster virus. A prominent feature of MCD is the so-called cytokine storm, fever, systemic inflammatory response, 
acute respiratory distress, etc., which in some patients culminate in multi-organ failure and death. In these graphs, the y-axis shows levels of IL-6 and IL-10, and the x-axis distinguishes three groups of patients, all with HIV infection, HHV8 negative controls, asymptomatic HHV8 HIV positives, and patients with symptomatic multicentric Castleman's disease. Most patients with symptomatic MCD show very high levels of IL-6 and IL-10. In persons living with HIV, HHV8 primary infection may present as an acute disease with transient lymphoid hyperplasia and Kaposi's sarcoma, as described in this case report from the New England Journal of Medicine in 1998. Patient AD was 50 years old when he came to our attention because of a Salmonella typhimurium bacteremia. Despite treatment with appropriate antibiotics, fever persisted and anemia, thrombocytopenia, enlarged mediastinal lymph nodes, hepatomegaly, pleural effusion, and ascites developed. Highly active antiretroviral therapy, multiple antibiotics, and a trial of antituberculosis therapy had no good effect. On day 15, he underwent a biopsy of an inguinal lymph node, which showed vascular proliferation and extravasated red blood cells, interpreted as probable Kaposi's sarcoma. On day 20, he had rapidly worsening dyspnea. The bronchoalveolar lavage was not informative because no infectious agents were visible on gram and acid fast stains. After the bronchoalveolar lavage, the patient did not do well and had to be intubated. Pleural effusions appeared, as well as cutaneous lesions suggestive of KS. The diagnosis was finally established on day 23, on the samples taken 10 days before. Quantitative PCR for HHV8 were high in the blood. PCR analysis for DNA HHV8 was also strongly positive in the inguinal biopsy. But surprisingly, anti-HHV8 antibodies were not present on day 13. On day 23, treatment with anti-CD20 antibodies was started. Unfortunately, this was too late and the patient died on day 34 of multi-organ failure. A post-mortem plasma sample was positive for anti-HHV8 antibodies. Remember that antibodies were absent on day 13 thus establishing the diagnosis of primary HHV-8 infection. Case 2 was a 50-year-old homosexual man who started highly active antiretroviral therapy after an episode of fatigue, a 4 kilogram weight loss, when he had a CD4 count of 176 and a elevated HIV viremia. Shortly thereafter, there was a rapid development of lesions suggestive of Kaposi's sarcoma. See images. In September of 2002, he had an increase in the extent of cutaneous Kaposi's sarcoma and lymphadenopathy with leg edema. In a bronchoscopy, lesions of KS were found and he had a constant fever between 38 and 39. But then in October, he went into remission, the fever disappeared, the platelet count increased. However, in January of 2003, there was a uh, relapse with positive HHV8 antibodies with an elevated level of HHV8 in his lymphocytes and development of pancytopenia, in particular severe thrombocytopenia. 
In this slice from a abdominal CT scan, you appreciate the enormous enlargement of the spleen. The spleen was excised and weighed more than 1.5 kilograms. There was positive in C2 hybridization for HHV8 and histologically angiofollicular lymphoid hyperplasia compatible with Katzelman's disease was found. There was no evidence of lymphoma and no evidence for Kaposi's sarcoma. He was treated with etoposide, 200 mg weekly for four weeks, then 150 mg weekly for four months, with disappearance of fever, of thrombocytopenia, and improvement in the Kaposi sarcoma skin lesions. However, he had a relapse in October of 2003, treated with etoposide combined with rituximab until April of 2004. The HHV8 became negative in the plasma after 2004, and on heart, the CD4 counts rose from 156 to 1,500. The next patient was a 61-year-old gay man with a long-standing indolent Kaposi sarcoma who declined treatment for HIV. In July and August of 2008, he felt fatigued, he had fever, he had a weight loss of 5 kilograms, a CD4 count below 200 with elevated viremia and started highly active antiretroviral therapy. New lesions of Kaposi's sarcoma appeared with generalized lymphadenopathy, particularly cervical. In this CT scans, you appreciate the enormous number of lymph nodes all increased in size. One of these was biopsis and the diagnosis was Castleman's disease. The patient was treated with liposomal doxorubicin and highly active antiretroviral therapy. Apparently he is cured. Case four is a 28 year old African woman with HIV infection and a CD4 count of only 38 in the August of 2001. He was started on Calitra, T4T and 3TC. In September of 2001, she developed fever, anemia, neutropenia, hypoalbuminemia, proteinuria and generalized lymphadenopathy. In the sputum, M tuberculosis was found. A cervical lymph node was biopsied A lymph node was biopsied, and to our surprise, it did not show tuberculous granulomas, but rather the typical onion peel appearance of Castleman's disease. Stains for both types of light chains were positive, suggesting a polyclonal population typical of CD, and in situ Immunohistochemistry for HHV8 was also positive. This is not shown here. On September 15th of 2001, treatment for tuberculosis with rivabutin, isoniazid, ethambutol, and pyrazinamide with heart was started. There was a good initial response with the disappearance of fever and improvement in anemia and leukopenia, but on November 1st, there was a relapse with hemolytic anemia and she was put on high doses of prednisone. On November 18th, she was readmitted for fever, pancytopenia, abdominal pain and abnormal liver function tests. On November 23rd, a splenectomy was necessary for intractable thrombocytopenia and hemolysis, but the patient died six days later. This is a picture of hemophagocytosis in the splenectomy specimen. And a CT image one day before the patient's demise showing a hypotense mass in the right hemisphere. Autopsy results from brain 
showed fungal mycelia compatible with the diagnosis of aspergillosis or possibly mucor mycosis with invasion of blood vessels and massive hemorrhage. Finally, the last patient in this video was a 34-year-old with HIV, HCV and HPV infection treated intermittently with efavirenz and combivir. His CD4 count was 457, his viral load 5000. He had fever, weight loss and anemia, rapidly developing cutaneous and lymphatic Kaposi's sarcoma, enlargement of liver and spleen, and one of the lymph adenopathies was biopsied and the biopsy yielded multicentric Castleman's disease. Here is a slice of the abdominal CT showing a large liver and a even more enlarged spleen. In October 2006, however, he had renewed fever and new precordial pain. Note the increase in the size and the tent-like appearance of the heart in October 2006. A frame from a two-dimensional echocardiogram showing the pericardial effusion, that is the echo-free space shown with the arrows. The pericardial effusion contained large cells with a basophilic cytoplasm and prominent nucleoli. These cells stained negative for CD20 but positive for CD38, as is suggestive of primary effusion lymphoma. Thank you for watching and thanks in advance for your feedback. This video is part of a series on opportunistic diseases in HIV AIDS. If you are interested, please subscribe or click on the latest upload top left.